Hello and welcome back to my Sandbox EDB series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. The launch for today is the Martin Shuttle on ETS-8 carrying Crew Node Extension 1 to Hoffman Station. This extension is meant to allow for the attachment of further habitation facilities since the station currently doesn't have accommodation for a full Orion Space Liner. The Martin Shuttle has the new Das Valdez 4 docking port arrangement which reduces the cargo bay volume taken up by the shuttle's docking module and also allows for a full crew complement of 8. The new shuttle will also feature additional Werner and RCS thrusters to ensure that it can dock safely with the station. We'll pick up the countdown here, T-20. T-15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 engines start, 2, 1, and liftoff. We have liftoff of the Martin Shuttle on ETS-8, carrying the crew node extension 1 to Hoffman Station. A bit too much force on the boosters as usual, but it looks like Athena has it, and we will wait the roll program here. Looks like we've got a good ascent. And here we have the roll program. The roll program is in. And for this 8th EDB shuttle mission, the commander is Kathina Kerman, who is commander on ETS-5, as well as backup on ETS-1 and 2. Al Bart is the engineer, and he flew to space for the first time on ETS-6. Erlen, the scientist on this mission, and Sean Burry, the backup pilot, will both get their first taste of space on this mission. The shuttle is looking good here. You'll notice that the OMS engines were not lit on liftoff and that is because the cargo is fairly light. It is mainly a structural component. It does have fuel tanks. It is composed of fuel tanks, but those are empty fuel tanks and so uh, very light payload and that was part of the reason. Oh, we do have OMS engines lit here as the boosters are about to separate. Those just helping with stability. Coming up on booster separation. Boosters are out and boosters are away. RCS is on to help with stability. And the boosters are clear. The shuttle is go for its target 100 by 100 phasing orbit which will allow it to catch up to Hoffman Station, which is not too far off, as we see the rapiers are now off, as balance seems to be okay. The Kerbal's looking a little bit distraught for no apparent reason, as the shell seems to be in good shape. After the failure to dock the ETS-7 external tank to the station, this external tank is fitted with the necessary Werner thrusters to help it get to the station, so it is destined for orbit. It does have docking ports at either end, and the nose cones decouple away from the main body. And we will expect a nose cone decoupling while the periapsis of the shuttle is still in the atmosphere so that they get disposed of properly. And of course, the external tank also has its own controller, and with the additional Werner thrusters, it will make its way using remaining liquid fuel and oxidizer in the tank to Hoffman Station after the shuttle makes its way. And here is the shuttle's situation right now, still building up its apoapsis. Here we have additional use of the OMS thrusters, the rapier engines, of course. And the unlocking of the upper tank of the external tank, which have been locked, of course, for balance purposes. The shuttle is now approaching its target apoapsis of 100 kilometers. And here we see the shuttle main engines throttled down as they approach the target apoapsis there. Main engine shutdown. And from here on, it will be the OMS engines, the four rapier engines on the shuttle, that will take everything up to orbit. And again, the external tank is going to orbit as well. And so no separation of the external tank at this time. The rapiers, of course, had to be restrained. They could not go full throttle because of balance issues again. And so very carefully using those rapiers to boost 
the orbit up and then before it got too high the rapiers were shut down and the nose cones were decoupled and so there go the nose cones on the external tank and now the docking ports are free and those will re-enter there was a little bit of a hitch though with the forward nose cone which of course slammed right back into the external tank so the shuttle had to sidestep it and then proceed on. And here we see that maneuver. But aside from that minor issue, the shuttle and its external tank managed to make orbit and as you can see not too far behind from Hoffman Station and indeed after the separation of the external tank as we see here Again, the shuttle and an external tank making their separate ways to Hoffman Station. We see here that it would not take more than an orbit, more than an hour to uh, get a plotted rendezvous to Hoffman Station. A very minor burn to boost the orbit to that 120 kilometer station orbit. And here is that burn to rendezvous. And while everything seemed to be going swimmingly at this point, uh, Mission Control suddenly discovered that there was a flaw in their external tank arrangement. In particular, there were no batteries added to the external tank, and so it ran out of electric charge. Now that means that the ADB can't deorbit it either, so a tug will have to be sent to it. Uh, unfortunately, the nerfed tug, which is currently in orbit, only has a standard docking port, not a senior docking port and so a new tug will have to be sent up to deal with the external tank and dock it to the station. Uh, we will await that launch in a future broadcast. Here the shuttle is matching speeds with the station and then proceeding towards it. Of course it will continue to hold at its standoff distance of about 300 meters. It is not yet ready to dock with the station. The next shuttle mission will carry the shuttle's own docking adapter and so we look forward to that in ETS-9 and so at that point the shuttle will be able to dock with the station. But here it is slowing down and now it is preparing to release the payload and so rotation so that the payload is properly oriented with respect to the station and now payload release and the payload uses its own RCS fuel in order to exit the cargo bay and make its way to the station as so many other modules of the station have done previously. Now this is going to be an interesting module to maneuver to the station because there is basically a Jebediah Kerbin's GB in the way and uh, we'll see how this is maneuvered between the GB's vertical stabilizers, the V-tail of the GB and so uh, the, what, that's one of the reasons for the shape of this module is to accommodate the GBs that dock in that area and you'll see that soon so here it is approaching the station aiming high uh, pointing above the solar panel rays and you can see where the GB is and the Orion space liner and so it's going to have to dock at the station on that senior docking port uh, halfway uh, basically right below the cockpit of the GB that you see there and here it is turning towards it and this time it is Jebediah Kerbin handling the docking he wouldn't let anybody else do it since his own GB is at risk of course and there's a good view of the the GB as well as the Orion Space Liner on board the station and you can see how it has to maneuver itself fairly close to the GB in order to dock at that docking port here it is coming ever closer it is a little bit offset deliberately in order to give some buffer to the GB you can see that offset here and it will correct that only after it clears those vertical stabilizers. 
Coming closer now, very slow and steady. Aside from the GB, it should be a relatively straightforward docking. The senior docking ports, of course, have tremendous magnetism and a reliable grip on each other. Here we go, the final phase of docking within a meter of the target here. And we have magnetism. And the module's docked. The module's docked and a substantial extension to the station and we would expect further crew modules on that portion and actually in future flights also extensions to the solar arrays. And so the station grows ever larger, in this case to help accommodate the passengers of the Orion Space Liner. And so we'll look forward to seeing those accommodations added to the station on a future date. For now, we'll turn back to the shuttle, which will make its return to the KSC. And here are its cargo bay doors closing. The shuttle is more heavily laden with fuel than normal, and that is because in order to get to orbit, it didn't use its internal fuel to make the OMS burn. Instead, it used the external tank's fuel to make the OMS burn. And so, carrying that extra fuel, it means that uh, the center of mass will have to be managed a little bit more actively. And here it is turning upright so that it can hit the atmosphere properly. You can see the well between the wheels, that is where the burner thrusters and RCS thrusters will go, and that is because there is no good uh, downward facing thrusters to help the shuttle dock at this point. Here you see the speed brakes extended as the shuttle descends into the atmosphere at a 40 degree angle. The crew is clearly excited about coming home, but Kathina will have to focus because it will be an evening landing at the KSC. As you can see, the KSC is approaching the dark side of the planet, and so Kathina will need to actually pass over the KSC and turn around in order to make the landing. That's safer than trying to make it straight in with the lighting situation as it is. Here, the fuel is being rebalanced, as mentioned before, because there is so much of it. But otherwise, the shuttle holding about a 30 degree up angle uh, pitch as it descends through the atmosphere below 38 kilometers. Here is the situation as it approached the home continent. And you can see the trajectory clearly, clearly heading east past the KSC there. And here it is heading over the mountains quite high and it will be quite high still as it passes over the KSC. Here you can see the lighting situation as the shuttle began to pass over the KSC grounds. Not the easiest thing to spot that runway without having a uh, go around like this. The shuttle lights are on as it passes beside the island runway and then begins to make its turns. You can see the boosters being recovered down there. Uh, they customarily drop fairly close to the island runway's island, making it easy to pull them ashore at that point. And here is the turn towards the KSC. You can see that the shuttle is still descending quite rapidly. Engines were definitely necessary considering the heavier fuel load that the shuttle was still carrying. Shuttle lined up with the runway at about 10 kilometers in altitude, descending quickly. Somewhat unexpectedly, it was necessary to run the rapiers on the way in as the shuttle was losing velocity rather quickly. Uh, we are uncertain at this time why it was experiencing greater drag than usual, but Kathina managed that well despite a certain degree of panic at this phase. You can see the shuttle coming in relatively low compared to previous approaches and actually that's fairly good because the shuttle tends to come in high and so this was a very good approach here at 400 meters
Three hundred. Looks like feet dry at two hundred. One hundred. Bit of a wiggle there at fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. And touchdown. Gear is down. Nose gear is down. And the drag parachute is out. Speed brakes are out and we're just waiting for wheel stop here as the shuttle has successfully completed its mission ETS-8 bringing the crew note extension 1 to Hoffman Station. Wheel stop, there it is, and we welcome back Athena, Albart, Erlen, and Sean Berry back home to the KSC. And with that, the external tank issues notwithstanding, this was a successful mission, and the EDB now has a reason to send up an additional space tug to deal with senior docking port sized uh, payloads, and that was certainly in the cards already. And so, not a big problem for the EDB, that simply needs to be moved up in the schedule. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching this broadcast of ETS-8 from the EDB. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.